I always had a certain predilection for sniper rifles in video games, probably because I get some kind of giggle at imagining my enemies getting jump scared by a shot out of nowhere. Or maybe it's because I can't deal with all the tryhards quadruple jumping around me in Titanfall 2 so fast I start vomiting. And so I was extremely intrigued by the sniping focused Children of the Sun, developed by Rene Rother. Rother? Rod? Whatever. Not exactly the most appropriate title, to be honest. First of all, it's entirely set at night time. It's entirely set at night time. It's entirely set at night time. Second, there are no children in it. But it does have the kind of edgy aesthetic a 14 years old would describe as Toad's Red. Or some other variation. I don't know how kids speak nowadays, okay? But I digress. In Children of the Sun, things uh, happen, I guess. Every once in a while you get a 2 seconds cutscene where images flash so fast I swear I was expecting the developer to pull a fight club on me and add a surprise stick shot in one frame. The timing was just right. The Kanamara Matsuri was just one week ago. I'm sorry, Rene, I'm just not a big fan of games that try so hard to be cryptic and alternative with their storytelling. And by the time flying cars got involved, I kinda turned my brain off and went with emotion. You're some kind of a mixture between Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men and Jared Leto's Joker in what I think is a revenge mission against the leader of some cult played by Big Lebowski in the town of... Uh, village name. Yep, that's a thing. We achieved that by decimating the various cultists we encounter level by level, but here's the kicker. You control your bullet in order to kill every enemy in each stage with a single shot. Which basically turns this first person shoot, well, first bullet shooter into a puzzle game. We have some degree of control over the bullet trajectory, but we can completely change it only when we hit a target, which makes birds the most valuable resource in the entire game. Birdie. I don't think they ever explain why we can only use one bullet, though. Seems like an oversight when you're on a murdering rampage. But who knows, maybe the cult the protagonist was a part of is actually Scientology, which means that now she's so broke she can only afford one pack of bullets and a leftover mask from an Halloween rave party. But jokes aside, this is a pretty satisfying game. The sound effects of our shots turning our enemies' brains into kimchi almost creates a diegetic soundtrack as we jump from one to the other with surgical precision. That is, when the actual soundtrack doesn't start blasting off. I get the idea here, a very grungy, underground and gritty atmosphere, but imagine listening to this cacophony non-stop for hours. It's so grating. But at least it made me appreciate even more the few moments of silence. If anything, because I adore the effects playing when you walk around. <sighs> it's a little things, you know. Since we're on the subject of walking, this is where I start having my gripes with Children of the Sun, because I'm not sure what it wants from me. On paper, you're supposed to walk around the stage to find and tag every cultist you need to kill. But halfway through, it gradually becomes more of a trial and error ordeal. You shoot your bullet and hope to find every hidden enemy in the environment, and if you're lucky, it's gonna be in your trajectory, and if it's not, well, tough shit, you have to redo the whole thing again. You might think it's not too bad, but when you spend 20 minutes trying to find the perfect path only to then realize that you missed an enemy... I hate this so much. I hate this. Yeah. My patience was definitely tested. And I don't get why, because it would have been very easy to fix this, just have the enemies have a walking routine so that you could just patiently analyze the environment before committing to the shot, but no. The vast majority of them just stand still the whole time. The ones protected with heavy armor don't even flinch when you obliterate their friends right next to them. Oh Jeremy, stop sleeping on the job, you wanker. Speaking of armor, they represent one of the three types of enemies, accompanied by your basic goons and then the make your drones from Doom Eternal. Armors can only be pierced if your bullet gains enough velocity, so you need to plan your path in order to put distance between one target and the other. But these guys? These brain assholes? 
they just cover themselves with a giant shield that can deviate your bullet. And first of all, fuck you. You're ruining my coward sniper power fantasy. Second, I hate them with burning passion. Given that there's only one very specific way to kill them, they create an added challenge for sure, but it also reduces the amount of freedom you have to approach each level where they're featured in, and that's without considering how frustrating the bullet deviation can get. I don't want to make too much of a big deal out of it, mind you, because Children of the Sun remains very fun throughout the entire experience, but this type of enemies really highlights how this game lacks the kind of experimentation I could have had with those Hitman sniper challenges, and that's because there's a complete lack of any physics-based elements. Aside from basic stuff like exploding cars, Children of the Sun doesn't ever lean into the kind of environmental puzzle I was hoping for. What we get here instead resembles more a vertical slice of a game that could have had a lot more potential. And that's probably why it's so short. It knows that it can't overstay its welcome. And I mean that in the most positive way. I have a lot more praise for a game that knows when it's time to roll the credits compared to one that sticks around like herpes. I'm sorry, Dredge, but there's only so much fish I can digest before I beg Cthulhu yeah. to put an end to all of this. So yeah, it's a pleasant 5 hours game. One spent on the penultimate level and the other four in the remaining missions. But I really appreciate the fact that you can play it in its entirety with just one hand, because it seems like the perfect way to prepare myself for Stellar Blade. 